When I was growing up, basically, I lived in a, a suburb. There's cookie cutter houses all the way down the street. And yeah, and I had a nice home, really, like a nice family life. Like my parents had a normal job, you know, working nine to five, came home in the evening. After college, you know, after I went to school, that all sort of like exploded into this different idea. From that point onward, like I never had like a fixed place that I was, you know. People started asking me, so where do you live or where's your home? That's the living, you know. That's Bernardo's house. Sleep right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice view. <laughs> A few times in life, you know, I don't know if it was the danger of like, of getting hurt or hurting somebody else or more of the danger of like, I can go broke. This is worse than a, the heaviest drug ever, you know? And it grabs you and sucks you in and there's kind of nothing else like it. Like, it's this thing that you kind of give up everything else for. I mean, right now I feel pretty at home with my buddies in Lodi. Like the past couple of days, we've been charging, you know, and that's like, that's like as close to home as it, like it gets. The humans always want to fly, like, like, who doesn't like stop on the top of a mountain and watch the sunset and then see a bird fly and be like, man, I wish I, I wish I could fly. The big dream at the beginning was like, I was gonna climb big walls, you know, and then jump off of them. I was always more of an outdoors enthusiast. Skydiving is, is, is an element of the outdoor enthusiasm. We definitely have that, but uh, for me, it was always this uh, desire to fly from mountains. You go back to like Leonardo da Vinci, why he was so interested in like, let's make human flies. And I think it's, it's been human mind that we will fly for a long time. It's just something really out of our nature. And then if we can achieve that somehow, it's something like supernatural. I skydive because it's unlike anything I've ever done before. When I did my first skydive, like, sure, it was awesome. It was cool. And they're like, oh, are you going to do your AFF? I was like, yeah. And then when I did my second skydive, and then he showed me how to move my hands, so when I felt that I could control what I was doing in the sky, that was it. That was when I was like, I have to do this. Like, there was no questions about it, and I got my paperwork, like, that day. Just hopping out of the plane, like, you know, when you're slipping and then you really dream like oh my god I was flying like Peter Pan or Superman and then by controlling my body well and I can navigate my body around you know it really fulfills that dream of flying. Do the first jump was my first priority and then finish AFF and I didn't realize it was such a multi-span, multi-discipline sport. If we've given Irish a ticket head on out to the creeper pad and we're going to dirt dive the jump. Cool. That's our call to arms. Heard about Lodi, $13 jumps, so I came out here and the 
the culture of the place just shocked me. I couldn't believe people lived like this. And the people that you find here, I've never come in contact with anywhere I've been in the world. Uh, the slide's closed the next five minutes, don't slide. Damn it! Hey, hey! Stop sliding! I haven't been many places, but the people you find here are very unique. <laughs> It's a fun factory. Better than chocolate factory. It's a fun factory. pretty much start here in Lodi in 2012. I have um, I have little issues with like motion sickness from my first like 40, 45 jumps, where every time that I was in the plane or getting down the ground, I would feel like very excited to the point it was, you know, dry heating. <laughs> Not feeling so good. But uh, I did let that stop me. I definitely remember being uh, real stoked at, at the end of each day and having like a sense of accomplishment and sleeping like a freaking baby. Like that took a lot of, you know, power and will and courage. Pretty much changed the entire course of my life. I uh, split straight for the drop zone, um, took my AFF course, uh, became a packer, uh, moved into my vehicle, kind of quit, quit my job and started skydiving full time. From there it sort of, it just exploded into more and, and more adventures. But then I, I engineered a redundancy from my job and I got the money to get my tandem ready. Nice. Hop and pops my way. So <laughs> hop and pop. <laughs> the, uh, of course yeah, you did. I was, on, I was on the crest of that hop and pop tandem instructor wave. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't very good at it for a long time. But uh, we got through it and I ended up meeting Liz, as you all know, and we got married. I met Irish, I met my husband. Again, that same day I did my second skydive. So the day I was getting my AFF paperwork, I also met him as well. Right. So that was crazy. Wish you guys beautiful life together in America. You were safe. Take Irish to be your lovely wedded husband. I definitely do. Yeah! Take me home. And then 
all of our friends that I had met from the that day to our wedding day were on our wedding jump. Right. And that was like the most memorable thing ever to have all your friends in the sky coming together for something was amazing. I never I still don't believe that that happened. Right. Airplanes, you know, uh, are not necessarily um, have the, uh, the best safety record. NTSB are investigating plane, a plane crash near the Lodi Airport. The plane landed belly up in a vineyard with 17 skydivers and a pilot inside. It happened east of Highway 99, a quarter mile from the airport. I heard a crash behind me and looked up, saw the plane cartwheeling, saw the tail of the plane above the uh, grapevines. Crashing in this vineyard, the FAA says the plane had engine trouble right after taking off. We wanted to open the door to let in some fresh air and when we went to do that, we realized there was actually fuel spraying all over the plane. So we shut the door again because we didn't really want fuel in the airplane. And the pilot turned around. We thought we were going to land, but it turned out the engine stopped. And we started des descending. Yeah, and we no one knew what was going to happen. And it's kind of this weird feeling of being in this metal coffin that's like <laughs> going, going towards the ground and, and not knowing whether we we're going to crash or die or what happened. Get off me! Get off me! There's no fire, okay? Relax! Okay! Seventeen skydivers and the pilot on board all walked away. The pilot had a bloody nose, but other than that, no injuries. Incredible people, I tell you, there's got to be 17 people who are real happy. they be saying their prayers. The plane dipped below some power lines. It clipped the back end of a brand new Tacoma Toyota on the road and flipped over in the field. Late Thursday, the owner of the Lodi Parachute Center went to check on his plane. I'm not very happy, but uh, everybody's fine, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. I mean, it could have been quite, uh, quite a tragedy. Owner Bill Dowes has no idea what went wrong. The FAA is still looking into the cause of the crash. At the time, it was a pretty cool experience. I mean, I don't know anyone who's been in a plane crash and survived, and I was, it was, you know, it's kind of this overwhelming like feeling of excitement having lived through that. And, 
have such a great story to tell and we got some pretty cool photos out of it. Oh baby, <laughs> I'm gonna go find me a plane crash because you know why? Because I work at a fucking office and I sit at a desk all day and I only oh. hear about exciting shit. So I'm gonna go take some pictures of it with my friends because my friends are cool and I'm late. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the tail. There's the tail. Yeah, they closed it. But did you look inside? The wing actually came through the um the wing came through over there. I can't I can't believe we're alive, man. Yeah. If one of those came through the roof of the plane. Fuck. Look at that. This is a strong fucking plane though. All right, let's go before we get in trouble. Every time I get on an airplane now, you know, that first few minutes of takeoff, sometimes I get filled with dread, you know, imagining if I can get killed in a plane crash, and it's a pretty shitty way to, way to die, you know, getting crushed by all your friends, or, you know, getting, getting burnt to death. And so, you know, and, and things like that is the fear, you know, takes away the fun sometimes and you know no one likes living in fear and you know that's something that you've got to try and manage is skydiving is is dangerous as much as people try and tell you it's safe um, I mean everyone says it's driving to the to the airport's more dangerous than jumping out of the plane and it's like it's, I mean I don't know anyone who's died driving to the airport so I don't really think that that's true oh I had a close call yeah. for my 200th jump Long story short, people didn't track away the way they were supposed to. And I had a canopy basically come up like right in my face. If I had continued tracking, I could have been in collision with that canopy. And then I would have been taken out, that person would have been taken out, and it was awful. So <laughs> thinking about it obviously shakes me up. And then watching the video, it makes you realize even how more of a close call that it was. Cause like, when you're experiencing it, you're like, oh shit, that was kind of scary. But then you see a video and then you're like, holy shit, like I could have ended right there and taken somebody out with me. Like that would, that's crazy. Everywhere, <laughs> when you drive your car, yeah. I mean, just stay here, we're all waiting for a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Explain well, know who, where you jump with and what people are doing around you. Well, no, we're not doing anything you see. Hey, But yeah, the danger is out there. It is a danger activity. You know. How many of you have ever wished you could fly? Right on, me too.
Just this past summer, my good friend and mentor, Dean Potter, and one of my best friends, Graham Hunt, both died in a double fatality accident in Yosemite National Park. That's a picture of Graham and me after we climbed the nose. Um, I was left mentorless, friendless, and alone. It wasn't just losing two people very special to me. Along with them fell my dreams, leaving me to question, should humans fly? Best jumping is super fun, but it's really scary. It really needs respect and constant focus and attention. I don't know if I can stop myself from looking down. Head Keep on. that head up. Force head, yourself to do it. Head down is death. <laughs> head down is death. That's a good one, Dougs. <laughs> Trust us, eh? OK. Three, two, one. See ya. Head up. Head up. Yes. Bye. Yeah. I need to stop doing it at some point. Why is that? Because friends of mine are starting to die doing it. And it's, it's not something I want to die doing. Yeah. It would be cool to do, but it'll get you eventually. When you, you know, when you have friends who are killed in the sport or um, when scary things happen to you, you start to question whether this is really what you want to be doing. Um, and sometimes the dream dies. You know, living out of a suitcase or living in a van or living in a tent, really, is this, is this cool? Is this what we uh, want to be doing with our lives? And that sense of home definitely like disappears. I mean, like I do try to really think and say, is this the right way to go, you know? Am I doing the right thing? But it comes back to that point, what's right, what's wrong? It's all different options in life, different paths, right? We're all gonna leave the life anyways. Life doesn't stop. Down, take me out and guide me. Show love. Just life is really just like a series of fleeting moments. Like we, we have this much time here and it's going to pass in front of you like whether you like acknowledge it or not and you know I think I think it's important to like really really look at each individual moment and realize what it is and and stay present and um, and feel appreciation for those those you know those moments because they are passing, and like right now even, you know, like we're hanging out here by the fire. Who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow? The idea is to live the present, right? That's why we skydive, that's why we surf, that's why we climb and do these things, so. That's what we do here, we live the present. If I bother too much with the tomorrow and the next year, you know, I'm not gonna be living the present. <laughs> I'm proud of what I've done. I'm really proud of it. I think it's a, wild way to live life and definitely you know hard and and there's a lot of trial and tribulations and everything that go along with it but i wouldn't change it and you know i'm definitely proud of of uh everybody that takes the road less traveled everyone that decides to you know participate in the challenges because it's it's scary you know it's really scary and it's every day that's scary it's not just like oh one day you made it it's fine, it's, it's every day is scary. And I think a lot of people think, you know, like, oh, you jump off mountains or you climb, and you, so you don't have like fear, but it's not really like that. It's like you actually constantly have fear. I, I think at that point I looked back on my whole life and I, I realized like how much uh, joy and 
uh, sense of accomplishment and, and um, you know, confidence I, I had built from my whole learning process and how stoked I was about life, you know? So there's never any finish to the whole thing. I think it's a, a never-ending process. And that's part of why I love it, you know? There's always more to learn. Like when I was 25 to 30, we're just like amazing, you know? And I wanted to share that with everybody else. started thinking about like okay well what's the best way to to be able to share that you know and I think instructional work and teaching is is the way you know because you're directly influencing those who are inspired by maybe something they saw you do or some video It's a crazy thing, like throwing yourself out into the abyss of like tumbling through the sky and being like, okay, here we go. Like, and you're like trusting this dude. Like, just remember, if you arch, it's all gonna be okay. <laughs> Sweet. And you're interested in starting to base jump? I am interested. I go with Irish every time he goes, yeah. Okay. So I, I crew for him. And sometimes I walk up, I go all the way up, and then I'll just walk back down. So leave me now. I want to feel that. I do. Like, I get psyched when Irish goes. Like, I get psyched off of his energy and, like, how stoked on life he is afterwards. Perfect. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> kicking, he's kicking, he's kicking. I think it's really cool that we've, like, found this community here, this, like, group of people that are all, like, ambitious and inspired and I feel there's definitely like a sense of support oh yeah, oh, yeah. it goes on here like you don't feel it from everybody but I feel like our little niche like our little Lodi crew is really really supportive of each other yeah you, know? you want to help you want everybody to get better and have fun and be yeah. on the jump and yeah it's awesome you want each other to succeed and yeah now I haven't been home for two years and I've just all of a sudden discovered this home on the other side of the world you know talking about this concept of home and how we, we gave up our real homes and, and left pretty much everything behind and you know fortunately we were able to find this feeling of being at home you know wherever we felt supported in and in what we we're doing and following our dreams and felt that we we're living a true life and we're surrounded by our friends who supported that. I think that's what home to me is like a place where I'm happy, inspired, achieving my goals, and I feel the support of the community that's in that area. I, I share the same, I think the same feeling about where home is. It's where I feel supported, where I have friends, where I fulfill my dreams. Not exactly a physical place where I go back to. It's not stationary. It's a perspective, huh? It's a perspective. I don't know, this, it just gives so much back to me, flying. It's not just the flying, it's the hiking. And that's what I have to, I think we all have to remember, is um, that this is what it's about, you know? The flying is an amazing part of it. It's like the little cherry on the top. But just hiking with you guys is rad, you know? And maybe it'll end up too windy, or these clouds are gonna maybe do something where we're gonna be going, so maybe we won't get to jump, but that's okay. Still just another rad day in the valley. Yeah, I'm just sitting here freezing forever, but now it's getting 